Hello, my name is Alan Zhao Xing Liu at Boston University. Today, I'm going to present our assistant, Jay Kun, on how we can build a high performance internet service provider based DDoS defense solution with emerging programmable network hardware. As a joint work with my colleague from Intel, Johns Hopkins, Harvard, and Carnegie Mellon. So, today, DDoS attacks are on the rise. Despite of decades of efforts, we're still facing increasing attack risks in terms of volumes, diversity, and large capital and, and like operational costs to fight against them. For example, you might see a lot of recent news, like for example, from InfoSecurity, from the US Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency, from New Star, from ZDNet, and many more. So DDoS attacks are really getting worse regardless of efforts of more than 20 years. So in general, DDoS defense has the following three requirements. First of all, we expect the defense defense can handle large volume of traffic with low latency, especially not trying to interrupt legitimate traffic. Second, the system needs to be highly flexible in order to handle diverse attack vectors and dynamic attack vectors. Third, the DDoS systems need to optimize their capital and operational cost for the best possible cost-effective defense, especially for like large-scale networks like internet service providers or ISPs. Given all these requirements in mind, existing DDoS solutions that rely on auto-band detection, for example, like NetFlow, SFlow-based sampling approach, they sample some packets and trying to do some offline analysis to detect attacks. This can be quite slow or even accurate because um, if you're not, not sample enough packets. So once attacks are detected indeed, then we can deploy some hardware appliance to mitigate the attacks. For example, firewalls with certain like mitigation rules. However, these hardware appliances are usually with fixed functions and not very flexible. And also to buy them, it's a high purchase cost. For example, we survey um, 10G volumetric hardware appliance from Auburn Networks. So based on the public estimates, it's about like $100,000. Alternatively, we can deploy server cluster to mitigate attacks. So this software appliance, they are flexible for sure, but they come with low performance. For example, a reason in a free based defense solution they need at least like 100 commodity servers to handle 1,000 gigabits of traffic. So not even to mention the processing latency. So my question really is, can we do better in DDoS defense in terms of its performance, flexibility, and cost efficiency? There are indeed some new opportunities here based on the emerging trend in networking community. So with the increasing in natural probability and then like new device in the network, large networks such as like ISP networks, they have the new capabilities now for now and for the foreseen future. For example, programmable switches. They're running, operating at a high land rates like a six to 12 terabits per second per device. And they can you know, allow you to freely define the packet processing behavior using high level language, like for example, P4. And these devices are usually quite cost effective in terms of the, the operational and the purchase cost, quite similar as traditional switches at the same speed. So given all this, there are some recent efforts trying to explore on this direction. So for example, Presidon. So Presidon trying to add programmable switches into scrapping centers in, in order to improve the performance of existing servers there. However, the approach is not well suited for large scale defense, for example, ISP based defense for several reasons. So one, they still need out of band detection, which can be quite slow. Second, the scrapping center can approach the require a lot of like traffic routing to the fixed location, which add large latency. Third, they ported a few like uh, server-based mitigation function into switches directly. So these functions can, are not very scalable. 
when the traffic volume is, is high. So I will show example later. So given these drawbacks of existing solutions, we think the emerging like programmability in the ISP network let the networks become a vantage point to conduct DDoS defense. So the DDoS, um, the ISPs, they are either near the source of the attacks or near the victim of the attacks. And with this capability together, they do have the power and the incentives to provide the DDoS defense as a service to their client for profit. And now they can do a much high performance way and a much low cost way. Today, we, I'm focused on ISP-based defense. So our question is simple to state. Can we design ISP-based DDoS defense that fully leverage the programmable switches? To answer this question, our vision is a switch native DDoS defense solution called JQuint. So JQuint turns ISP network into a defender. No out of band detection required, no scrapping centers, no whatsoever. So JQuint, they integrate the detection and the mitigation completely in the programmable switches and design some switch native mitigation efforts. So it means that all these components completely run switches to fully leverage its capability for DDoS defense. So let me give some details about JQuant. So in JQuant, we have three components. So the first component is that we need to do some broad spectrum, always on attack detection, deploy, for example, at the broader routers. And then once we get some metrics and attack types and volumes and all this information, we will send it to the controller for dynamic resource allocation, which trying to de determine where and when to activate the mitigation functions on the switches where they have the resources. And then based on this decision, you know, the switches will enable activate some mitigation functions. So let me try to talk about each component. So first of all, in the detection components, our design leverage universal sketches, which is quite new concept in the network monitoring to estimate a large range of statistics or even sometimes unforeseen functions for different flow keys. For example, like for like estimating large flows, distinct flows, heavy change the flows, number of distinct sources, entropy value, or et cetera. So in addition to the sketches, we also add a few signature counters trying to you know, navigate among some existing attacks. So combining these all together, we can estimate various attacks, types and volumes, and even trying to make an alarm about unidentified attack, attacks. Because we have the power to estimate a large range of attack-related metrics. So based on these capabilities, we define a, a, detection, a, a detection metric API query that you know, the developers and operators, they can you know, define the way they obtain this uh, detection results. And then we have the detection results along with the natural wide available resources. That's something we can get, get from the network and we do the resource allocation. And then we're trying to activate mitigation efforts on the switches. Here, this critical part is that we need to do on-demand mitigation because the switches are resource constraint. We cannot afford to really preload all possible mitigation running all time, even if there's no attack. So we have to do this on demand. But this is not enough. So given this very constraint, like say we have like several megabytes, several tens of megabytes of memory, that's it. How we can really afford to run even one or two such mitigation, trying to fully leverage its capability to processing the traffic. So what we do is we have to optimize a certain best practice mitigation functions and combine with a lot of switch, uh, switch optimized probabilistic data structure like sketches, bloom feeders, counting bloom feeders, uh, proxying proxy with feeders, rate limiters, all this together. We combine them to provide you certain switch optimized mitigation API, so like a rate limit, 
option made based allow list, the block list, and etc. And using this mitigation API, we can provide you the best possible performance we can achieve right now. Like we can preserve like 10 million legitimate connections using only like 10 megabytes of unchecked memory. So in this way, it's much better than you just develop like moving server-based components into switches. And currently JQuen already support 21 attacks and their mitigation strategies. To see the difference between a switch native design versus standard way of doing mitigation, let's consider this example. So the Presidon implements standard scene proxy in switches in this way. But the critical part here is that they have to keep per connection state, for example, sequence number, to make sure that the connections that passing through the proxy will keep the sequence numbers in order. However, this per connection state is not gonna scalable in the resource constraint switches. So we wanted to use more efficient data structures. So, but we have to change the logic of sync proxy. One way we're doing this is that instead of sending back a normal sync app packet with cookie, we send a, an error one, which is an auto window one. And just to pretend something wrong with the connection. And the client who gets it, will send it back a reset packet and with the cookie inside it. And then we can verify this client as a legitimate one and add this identity into the allow list. So this allow list, we can use a lot of like efficient data structure, for example, Bloomfield to do that, which is more scalable. So there were many, many more such examples in our paper. So let's look at some real world evaluation results start with a single attack. So compare with Poseidon, we're running a single Intel, Intel Tofino switch on three different attacks, like SYNC, DNS, and NTP. We find that by the power of, of adopting probabilistic data structures, uh, JQuen is much more scalable and accurate than Poseidon. Then we can consider more complex dynamic attack scenarios. We randomly pick six volumetric attacks in launching uh, around like 380 total volumes in a period of five hours. You can see here, JQuen can achieve very high detection accuracy and very high mitigation effectiveness. So many more examples, please look at our paper. So let me conclude here. So internet service-based DDoS defense today, they have to compromise performance, flexibility, and cost effectiveness. So the programmable switches as, as a peeling uh, device, like providing like high learning rate packet processing and the programmability. So by leveraging prob uh, programmable switches in the ISP networks, JQuen provide a switch native way to do the DDoS defense that has like broad spectrum detection, network wide resource management to efficiently leverage your resources and can enable switch optimized library for best practice mitigation. In this way, we can envision by using our library that the more and more the switch-based mitigation structures can be developed. So I'm ending my talk now. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you very much.